What's up, my comic comrades? Longtime watchers of the show know we've already done a history of Nightwing, the first Robin, a history of Red Hood, the second Robin, and now today we're doing a history of Tim Drake, aka Red Robin, the third Robin. That's a lot of Robins. And if you haven't noticed, we've actually been going through the Robins sequentially, starting with Dick Grayson, then Jason Todd, and now Tim Drake. And then we'll eventually do one on Damian Wayne. But before we dive in, we want to thank today's sponsor, Origin PC. We recently got several of Origin's custom computers for our production work and these things are absolute beast machines. But they're also perfect for gaming. With an Origin PC, you can immerse yourself in your favorite games powered by GeForce RTX. The revolutionary RTX platform maximizes your performance and visual fidelity on PC with real-time ray tracing and super powerful AI processing. And for a limited time, get Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PC with the purchase of an Origin PC powered by a GeForce RTX 20 series graphics card. You can learn more about the bundle and customize your own Origin PC with GeForce RTX by clicking the link in the description. Now with all that said, let's talk about some Tim Drake. Tim Drake was created by Marv Wolfman and Pat Broderick. He first appeared in Batman 436 in August of 1989 and would first appear as Robin in Batman 442 of the same year. Like all the Robins, Tim Drake is extremely well known, but I would say he's probably the second most known Robin after Dick Grayson. And a big part of that is because when Batman the Animated Series turned into the new Batman adventures and Dick Grayson left the role as Robin to become Nightwing, Tim Drake was brought onto the show to become the new Robin. Even though in the comics, Jason Todd was the second Robin. So because of Tim Drake being part of such a successful cartoon series, along with being in the animated movie Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, Tim Drake is a really well-known character. He's also the Robin in the Arkham games. But besides being in a hit animated series and a video game franchise, Drake in the comics is considered by Dick Grayson himself to be the better Robin. Dick literally said he's a better Robin than I ever was. He'll probably end up being a better Batman too. Those are some big words considering Dick Grayson is the original Boy Wonder and at the time, the current Batman. But it doesn't stop there. Bruce himself gives Tim Drake an amazing compliment in Batman Hush saying, Dick saw being Robin as a thrill. It's probably why he outgrew it. Jason saw being Robin as a game. It's probably what got him killed. But Tim, I have to hand it to the boy. He wants to be the world's greatest detective and from what I've seen so far, he will be someday. Which is insane because Batman is basically saying one day Tim Drake will be an even better detective than he is. And then there's even more examples than that. Just check out our Who is the Most Skilled Robin episode if you want to know more about that. In short, the Bat family knows that Tim Drake is the best Robin that Batman has ever had, even though I think Damien would argue that point. But now, let's see how this incredibly skilled Robin got his start. From Tim's first appearance, we learned that he was in the crowd that night at the circus when Grayson's parents were murdered. Which is crazy because the third Robin was there for the tragedy that created the Robin mantle in the first place. Over the next several years, Tim became a massive fan of the dynamic duo, following their careers ever since he saw the murder of the Flying Graysons. It's also important to note here that by the age of nine, Tim displayed a genius level intellect. Because of this, Tim had excellent instincts and deductive skills. One day, when he saw Batman and Robin battling the Penguin on TV, Tim noticed that Robin performed a quadruple somersault, and he remembered seeing Dick Grayson do the same exact move when he was with the Flying Graysons. And since this was such a distinct acrobatic move that not many people could do, Tim quickly made the connection that Dick Grayson and Robin were one in the same, which only made him continue to follow Batman and Robin's career for years to come. Now, eventually Grayson would become Nightwing and Jason Todd took up the role of Robin. But after Jason Todd's apparent death, Batman grew more violent and reckless. And Tim being the super fan he was, noticed that this wasn't in Batman's true nature. So he was like, I'm gonna find Dick Grayson and get his help. Once Tim found Dick, he tried to convince him to retake the mantle of Robin saying, I think he needs you, Dick, but he doesn't need Nightwing. He needs you as Robin. So Dick and Alfred take him to the Batcave, which leaves Tim in shock, saying, I can't believe I'm here. In the Batcave, Grayson started putting on his Nightwing costume to go help Bruce. But Tim says, no, not Nightwing, Dick. Don't you understand? Batman needs Robin. Tim then looked at Alfred, saying, doesn't anyone understand? And Alfred replies, perhaps, young man, perhaps Master Dick understands profoundly. Perhaps that's why he brought you here. Shortly after, Alfred gets the Robin costume and Tim takes it saying, I've got to do something. Alfred says, don't you know what happened to Jason? And Tim replies, of course I do. But it's like I said to Dick, Batman needs Robin. So he puts on the Robin costume and goes out to help Batman and now Nightwing against Two-Face. However, Batman did not want a new partner, but also said the boy has potential. Eventually, Batman reluctantly accepted Tim as the new Robin, but under one condition. Tim had to endure physical and mental training from Bruce before he could become Robin so that he would not suffer the same fate as Jason Todd. And then gave Tim a modernized version of the Robin costume in Batman issue 457. 
And that's how Tim became Robin. But then we also have his new 52 origin, which is given to us in the Teen Titans Zero issue. We see that Tim is an extremely talented athlete and computer genius who comes extraordinarily close to discovering Batman's identity but never totally figures it out. When Tim finds Batman and gets rejected for the role of sidekick, he's like, okay, plan B, and decides to bring Batman to him by hacking the Penguin's bank account and donating a crap ton of the Penguin's money to charity. The Penguin traces it and his goons come after Tim and his family, but Batman was able to save them. But now being a permanent hit for the Penguin, Tim's parents are forced to go into witness protection. But Tim's parents, wanting him to have a better life than that, ask Bruce Wayne to take care of him. And soon enough, Tim takes on the identity of not Robin, but Red Robin. An identity he would keep up until recently, when Brian Michael Bendis changed him from Red Robin to Drake. But now, my friends, it's time for story arcs. Tim Drake has been in many stories over the years, but let's start with his Robin era which took place from 1989 to 2009, before he became Red Robin. As I just said in Origins, when Batman officially made Tim the third Robin, he gave him a more modern redesigned Robin suit, which set him apart from all the previous Robins, as Dick Grayson and Jason Todd basically wore the same exact Robin costume. Now, the first major story arc that Tim Drake Robin was a part of was the Batman Nightfall storyline. This is the story where Batman got his back broken by Bane, and Tim and Alfred were the ones who actually got him into an ambulance and took him to the Batcave. After this, Jean Paul Valley would take up the mantle of Batman, and Tim would go on patrol with him. But as Azrael kept getting more and more violent, he started to reject Tim. And after Azrael went full AWOL, Bruce was like, nah dog, I gotta get back in tip top shape and take the Batman mantle back by force. But even though Bruce defeated Azrael, he didn't want to go back to being Batman right away. So instead, he gave the mantle to the person who should have got it in the first place, Dick Grayson. This led to a near perfect partnership between Grayson Batman and Tim Drake Robin. But of course, after some time, Dick gave the mantle of Batman back to Bruce once he was ready. Around this time, Tim Drake was given a solo ongoing series that lasted for 183 issues. This series flushed out his character a lot and showed us his relationship with Stephanie Brown, aka Spoiler. He also had several miniseries, the first one simply called Robin, which follows Tim Drake going on a mission to Paris. And then we have Robin 2, Joker's Wild, which you guessed it was a four issue miniseries that puts Tim Drake up against the Joker, which was really crazy to see considering the Joker had killed the previous Robin, Jason Todd. And then we have Robin 3, Cry of the Huntress, which has Robin team up with the Huntress to take down King Snake and the Ghost Dragons. Besides being in Batman books and appearing in his own solo miniseries, he would eventually go on to be in teen books, being a member of Young Justice and the Teen Titans. But as we know, being a member of the Bat family basically means some tragedy has either happened to you in the past or is gonna happen to you down the line. And that proved true once again, when Tim Drake's father died in identity crisis by the hands of Captain Boomerang. His best friend Connell Superboy also died in Infinite Crisis, and his girlfriend Stephanie Brown was presumed dead in Batman War Games, which all happened over the course of three years from 2004 to 2006. All this caused him to relocate to Bloodhaven, AKA Nightwing's turf. It's during this time Tim Drake would give himself a brand new red and black Robin suit, which was a tribute to Superboy's costume. This is also the suit they used for Tim Drake in the new Batman Adventures cartoon series. Eventually, after Batman's apparent death, Dick Grayson becomes the new Batman and fires Tim Drake from the Robin mantle as he saw Tim Drake as an equal and wouldn't have Tim work under him. Damien Wayne is given the mantle of Robin and Tim still believing that Bruce is alive, takes the identity of Red Robin and leaves Gotham to search the world for Bruce. Anyway, 2009 to 2011 would give us the start of the Red Robin era. And I gotta say, I just love the original Red Robin costume, especially that cowl. From here on out, Tim Drake would continue to be Red Robin all the way into the New 52 just with a new costume design being the leader of the Teen Titans. Then in the DC Rebirth initiative, Tim Drake would still be Red Robin, but with yet a third Red Robin costume design, which looks very similar to previous Robin costumes, just having two R's on his chest instead of one. With that, at the beginning of DC Rebirth, Tim Drake would be part of Batman and Batwoman's team, which consisted of himself, Spoiler, Orphan, and Clayface. Then he was thought to be killed in the series, which of course puts Batman into depression, but this is comics, so he came back and is now under the pen of Brian Michael Bendis' Young Justice title. He was also recently given a brand new costume and name, which is Drake. I gotta say, I'm not feeling it so far. Oh, and I forgot to mention, towards the end of the New 52, Tim Drake became Batman Beyond for a minute when Terry was thought to be dead, so... That's pretty dope as well. Tim has also taken up the main Batman mantle a few times for a short period. All in all, Tim Drake is easily one of the best Robins, and by Dick's own admission, the best Robin. Like every other Robin, Tim doesn't have any actual superpowers, 
but like all the other Robins and Batman himself, Tim is a master in martial arts. Mastering forms like karate, dragon kung fu, capoeira, jiu-jitsu, and so on and so forth. Tim was trained in martial arts by Batman, Nightwing, and Lady Shiva, which are three of the best people you could be trained by in the DC Universe. With that said, Tim's fighting style differs from his predecessors. Dick's fighting style was heavily based in acrobatics, Jason was more of a street level brawler, and Tim's is more unpredictable and fluid than even Bruce's. Also, he's one of only three people in the world to have mastered the deadly martial art technique of the leopard blow. The other two being Lady Shiva and Batman. But besides his insane physical condition and fighting skills, Tim is a genius and easily one of the world's greatest detectives. Some would even argue that he's the second best detective in the entire DC universe, right under Batman. Which is a fair argument considering Batman himself said that Tim will surpass even his detective skills one day. But his genius doesn't stop at his detective skills. It also makes him a master in computer science and one of the best hackers in the entire DC universe. As for weapons and gadgets, he has all the weapons you would assume a Robin or Batman to have, like batarangs, grappling guns, antitoxins, rebreather masks, smoke pellets, again, all the stuff a Robin or Batman would have. With that said, every Robin has his own signature weapon, and Tim's is his bow staff, a custom-made retractable bow staff. But now that you got a good idea of how formidable Tim Drake is, let's take a look at some reading recommendations. Check out Batman issue 436, Batman 442, Batman Nightfall, Robin Volume 1 Reborn, Robin Volume 3 Solo, Batman Battle for the Cowl, and Detective Comics Volume 1 Rise of the Batman. Those are just a few to get all of you started. First up for the week of the 6th, we have Undiscovered Country Issue 1. This is a brand new image book written by Scott Snyder and Charles Soule. The story takes place in the near future and shows us an unknown nation that was once the United States of America. A land that's become shrouded in mystery after walling itself off from the rest of the world without explanation over 30 years ago. Here we have New Mutants Issue 1. Putting it simply, the classic New Mutants are back. Sunspot, Wolfsbane, Mirage, Karma, Magic, and Cypher all get together with new friends for a new mission. Here we have Batman Issue 82, City of Bane Part 8. Batman and his allies rage war on the City of Bane but an unexpected turn of events will send everyone reeling. Next up, we have Ghost Rider issue two. Ghost Rider vs. Ghost Rider, it had to happen. Johnny vs. Danny, but who does Mephesto have his money on? And finally, we have the infected King Shazam issue one. Billy has been infected by the Batman who laughs, and now he wants to fight the gods, literally. And that's gonna bring this episode of Variant to a close, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you want more Variant content, be sure to check out our podcast right here on this channel, or our Variant podcast channel, or iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and all that fun stuff. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.